Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to ChemCon Speciality Chemicals Limited Q3 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now want the conference over to Mr. Kamal Agarwal, Chairman and Managing Director, ChemCon Specialities Chemicals Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of ChemCon Specialty Chemicals, I extend a warm welcome to everyone for joining us on our call today. On this call, we are joined with our whole time director and CFO, Mr. Rajesh Gandhi, and our SGA and SGA, our investor relations advisor. I hope everybody has got an opportunity to go through the financial results and the investor presentation, which has been uploaded on the stock exchange as well as our company's website. We'll give you a quick snapshot on the recent development of the company and then Mr. Rajesh will walk through the financial performance. We are a leading manufacturer of specialist uh, chemicals such as CMIC and HMDS, which are primarily used in the pharmaceutical business. All our products like HMDS, CMIC and bromides have delivered a excellent uh, performance in Q3. In total, we produced 2,323 metric tons in the third quarter of uh, FY23 with an operational income of 77 crores registering a growth of 54% year on year basis. HMDS is widely used in the manufacture of antibiotics as a, uh, such as penicillin and other types of penicillin derivatives. Performance has continued to remain weak due to soft demand of the pharmaceutical producers in India. Demand for end user, user products like penicillin has sluggish and the same has been reflected in the business performance for the past few quarters. HMDS has contributed around 27 crores of revenue which is about 36% of the total revenue during the quarter. Revenue contribution from the exports and the domestic market has remained almost equal for the state period. CMIC is mainly used in the pharmaceutical industry as a key intermediate for anti ads and anti hepatitis B, that is kind of whole. We are also many other, uh, there are also many other chemicals that are used for manufacture of antiretroviral. Tanofovir is regarded as a uh, revolutionary drug for curing and preventing HIV. Demand for CMIC is showing up more from the international market than the domestic market. For the Q3 FY23, CMIC has contributed around 11 crores, which is about 15% of our total revenue. There has been a marginal improvement in the volume growth coupled with the better realization. Demand from domestic uh, pharma clients has remained soft for some months. Although we have received certain purchase orders from China, which will help us improve the revenue from the exports market. We have been able to see significant volume growth in the bromide business on the back of healthy demand and better sourcing of key raw materials. We produce inorganic bromides called calcium bromide, zinc bromide, sodium bromide, etc., which are mainly used as completion fluids in the oil field industry. For the quarter, we have registered a revenue of 29 crores in bromide business on back of robust demand, which is around 38% of the total revenue. 
we are delighted to announce that with the expansion of bromobenzene we have successfully added organic bromides in our product basket we have added a capacity of 2400 tons per annum of bromobenzene at our p9 facility since p8 unit is multi purpose facility we also produce some volumes of bromobenzene in p8 unit depending upon the demand for q3 23 uh, bromobenzene has contributed around 7 crores which is about 9% of the total revenue in the coming quarter we expect a very strong contribution from this chemical as we are receiving good inquiries from global agrochemical players on the other hand we have shelled out the commercial productions of uh, low volume core cbc and 25 dhc products and the facility shall be partly utilized for cmic depending upon the demand we have considered another product gunain which will be added in p9 we already have healthy inquiries for this product and are awaiting the final approvals from the local authorities at p10 unit we will be adding few other pharma chemicals which are primarily imported in india expansion of p10 is on schedule and we expect to start commercial production by q124 we have huge growth opportunities as we move deeper into the pharma market and meet the needs of chemical supply we expect the business momentum of hmd and ds and cmic products to revive in the coming period as we expect the pharma industry to recoup well due to the demand supply gap india imports uh, hmds and cmic significantly being a global leader in the this pharmaceutical chemicals we are well positioned to capitalize on this future opportunity our role in this growth opportunity will be to facilitate them to have substantial a sustainable partner in the long term we have done meaningful investments over the years to increase the product offering and will continue to do so to create long term sustainable growth I now hand over the call to Mr. Rajesh Gandhi to give you a glance of at financial performance. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal. Good morning, everyone. Q3 23 performance are follows. Total revenue stood at 77 crore as compared to 50 crores of Q3 22. A growth of 54%. on year on year basis domestic market market contributed around 40% whereas the international business contributed the remaining 60% total production volume for q3 was 2323 metric ton as compared to 1333 metric ton same period last year as highlighted by mr kamal agarwal there was lower volume of tech on some of our key products in terms of chemical wise revenue break up hmd has reported revenue of rs 27 crores cmic revenue stood at 11 crores bromides revenue stood at 28 crores bromobenzene revenue stood at 7 crores ebita for the company stood at 14 crores in Q3 23 with a margin of 70.17.6 percent. Net profit for the Q3 23 stood at around 11 crores with a margin of 14.9 percent. Nine months 23 performance as follows: Total revenue stood at 224 crores for nine months 23 against. 168 crores of 22 a growth of 33% on yoi basis domestic market contributed around 42% whereas international market contributed around 58% production volume was at 5799 metric tons for 9 months 23 against 4182 metric ton of 9 months 22
in I, in terms of chemical wise revenue break up for 9123 hmds revenue stood at 99 crores cmic revenue stood at 39 crores bromide revenue stood at 72 crores bromo benzene revenue stood at 7 crores ebita for the 9123 stood at 57 crores against rs 54 crores of 9122 Net profit stood at 45 crores for 9123 against 42 crores 9122. With this, we conclude the presentation and open the floor for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is on the line of Yoganj Jaiswani from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sure. Just wanted to uh, discuss with you on your expansion plan. So, around IPO time, we had aggressively, uh, you know, come out with an expansion plan and we have increased the capacity. While if we look at the numbers for the last two years, uh, there hasn't been much growth in line with how much you were, you know, expanding or, or how much you were planning. So, if, say, for example, in SMDS, if I go specifically, so between 2013 to 18 period, we were stuck around 1500, 1600 kind of volumes. Then we expanded the capacity around 2020 and we saw growth, right? We almost doubled to 3000. But then again, 2022, we see the numbers have started falling off. We are back to 2000 kind of an annual country. So if you could share, despite being getting so aggressive in the case, if we are not seeing those things uh, falling in place in numbers in terms of price. So uh, what is not going in our favor, if you could share your thoughts there. Good morning, Jim. As far as HMDS is concerned, we were very clear from the day one that we will not be expanding any further. Uh, we have maintained the capacities that we, uh, we had generated. There is a demand gap uh, that is going on in the market, which has resulted into uh, real-time lower production. However, the capacities have been retained. We were very clear that we will be expanding into the intermediates for other products other than HMDS and CMIC, which we are online. CMIC, we had a partial expansion, so we have done it. We have expanded, uh, we have added the new product Romobenzin, we have added the new product Gunain, and the expansions are for other products other than HMDS and CMIC. I think this suffices your requirement. Right. So, sir, uh Again, on HMDS only, if I have to uh, get a little more understanding there. So, uh, the demand gap that you are seeing, why is that happening? Are we uh, having challenges from the pharma segment? Because I think, if, if I remember correctly, you are also trying for different applications for it. So, are those things not picking up? And also, uh, given our total uh, global market share, in CMIC it's higher, but in HMDS it's quite low. I think we are less than 10% or 5% near about. So, and given our cost competitiveness, isn't exporting in ex, ex, uh, isn't exporting an option? Like, I mean, scaling up there, uh, isn't that an opportunity which we can try? Or what are the challenges there if you could share? The Indian pharma consumption is dropping. However, the exports of the product, Mr. Rajesh has already updated you, it is nearly 50% of the HMDS is under exports. So we have opened up the other market. We exports is not for the pharma application, it is for other applications only. Okay. So we have diversified, we have added the other areas successfully, which, which, which was been uh, targeted. 
And going forward, what is the expectation for these these two products in terms of demand, sir? See, these two products demand is uh, related directly to the pharmaceutical market. If there is any major change, then only it, it impacts. However, the pharma industry is, is moving from China to India, has already moved and it is also moving. We hope we will have better requirements of the product. Okay, got it. And sir, in terms of our other products that we have lined up, uh, we see there are a couple of delays even in, in the Guanine and other products. So could you share uh, what are our efforts there and uh, by when are we expecting those things to fall in place and start contributing to our numbers? We hope within the current quarter as well as the next quarter the product should uh, start giving the uh, figures into the balance sheet. The figures shall start reflecting in the P&L accounts. And how much contribution are we expecting uh, sorry, from them, sir? Uh, Mr. Jishwani. So may we request that you return to the question queue so the participants waiting for their turn. Sure. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Rajesh Jain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is uh, regarding HMDS and uh, CMIC compared to Q2 still the, the volumes haven't picked up in Q3 also. So my question is uh, how is it is expected to do in Q4 of this year, financial year? As far as the HMDS is concerned, the Q3 is better than the Q3 volume. That can be expected. This uh, being a projected statement, I won't be able to give you the exact volume. Ah. But well, no, no, uh, I'm as, saying in general, uh, is I the demand so picking up? As the things are moving, it, uh, it is a better volume compared to the past. Achha. Sir, with the slackness in the demand for these two products, uh, are they still getting imported? Uh, the imports has come down. It has come down? Yeah. Okay. So overall, the actual demand of the product has come down. Okay. Sir, my second question is, uh, we have done very well in the oil field chemicals. Yeah. So, so is this current momentum in sales is sustainable in Q4 as well as next year? Uh, we have done certain contracts for import of uh, our raw materials for bromide. Okay. And uh, looking to that, yes. It will be sustained in the current year as well as financial, as well as next year. Okay. That can be targeted. We are very confident on that. Okay, good. Sir, regarding the bromo benzene, uh, we have sold a good quantity around 252 metric ton in Q3. So uh, we are expected to achieve around 40 crores, you know, during this uh, current year. So with the current, uh, whatever the momentum, are you confident of achieving this? Uh, maybe a marginally less than 40 crore, but yes, okay. we are getting good volumes and we are getting good export. Very good. Sir, then you had mentioned about doubling this capacity, you know, from the current 200 metric ton to 400 or so. So, so will that be done in P9 or P10, sir? Uh, that won't be done uh, now. Sometime we will be adding certain areas and uh, then it will be added to that. So you will not be increasing that immediately? No, no, no. No, no. Okay. So my last question is, would there be any delay in commissioning of Gunai? Uh, like you have given this uh, Q4. Uh, would there be any more delay in uh, commissioning of this product? No. Within the Q4, we will be able to do it. But we cannot expect any sales in FI24, uh, FI23, right? It will get initiated. Initiated, but it will happen only in 24. Yeah, 24, we can expect a better sales. Okay. Sir, in the last call, you had mentioned the value of this product around $23 or so. So, it has remained at the same level? Yes. And what is the margin we can expect, sir? Around 25%. 25%. And how much capacity we have put? We have put 50 tons per month, 600 tons per year. 600. And if the demand picks up, there is a provision to increase the capacity? It is a modular plant. We can go for multiple plants. It has to be a new plant altogether. 
ओके सर थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई कम बैक इन दू इफ आई हैव मोर क्वेश्चन The next question is from the line of Ayush Agarwal from MEPL Value Investing Fund. Please go ahead. Um. Good morning, Ayush. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Agarwal. Your audio is breaking up. Mr. Ayush Agarwal. Is this better? Uh, sir, it's still breaking up. Uh, can you? Hello. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Please proceed. thank you yeah um so my first question is on our hmds i'm just following up on the first participant so like we have seen that you know we are less than 5 10% of global market share and right now you are mentioning that uh, we don't export for the pharma applications in hmds so if you can help us understand that you know despite the cost competitiveness that we have uh, why are we not exporting aggressively or tapping into new markets for hmds uh, to increase our wallet share HMDS cost. We are competitive in terms of uh, uh, international market against China. So we are exporting uh, only to the market wherein it is for other applications other than pharma. The pharma application of HMDS chiefly is in China only. The major volumes are consumed in China. So there, the cost competitiveness gets nullified near to that. because of uh, the import duties of china so we are cost competitive we can compete chinese in india and we can compete in the other part wherein the import duties are there understood what would be the non pharma application market size of hmds internationally uh, i won't be able to give that figures over it Roughly, if you have, I mean, uh, you know, is it 2,000 metric ton? Is it 5,000 metric ton? No, it's not justified to give a rough figure like this. All right, understood. All right. Um, well, my next question is on our P10 plant, uh, which we plan to commission in Q1 FY24. So, do we have regulatory approvals for that plant, or does that also need to wait for some, you know, uh, approvals? None of the plant require regulatory ap- uh, approval for Chemcon. no i i think gunine was delayed because of regulatory approval right it was not because of regulatory approval it was for uh, approval from the pollution control board uh, so that is what i'm trying to understand so uh, p10 also will require that or do we already have that no that is already been done understood so why is this delay in gunine specifically that was not the product included in our so we okay. had to go change of product permission oh understood understood um uh, my final question is on our inorganic expansion that we had planned uh, first you know what are our updates uh, on the inorganic expansion and second uh, how do we ensure that you know the uh, minority shareholder interest in the listed entity will be uh, maintained when we go for a large expansion or you know what kind of understanding does the management uh, is is approaching this expand uh, inorganic acquisition in organic acquisitions we do not have uh, to disclose anything as on date mm-hmm. we'll update you when there is a uh, concrete area mm-hmm. but before going uh, ahead with that and as far as the minority shareholders are concerned yes their uh, investment shall be protected and that will be an interested area for them also understood i'll, I'll come back in the queue sir thank you welcome thank you The next question is on the line of Kiran Naik from Kiran Investments. Please go ahead. Also, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and want to ask a question. Uh, Mr. Naik, you may please proceed with your question. Kiran Naik, your line is in the talk mode. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma- thank you, ma'am. Sir, over over apple to apple comparison in the listed peers. Sorry. Over over uh, peer comparisons, apple to apple, the, the same products with other peer manufacturers. We do not have any listed companies manufacturing the similar product. One product is common, that is with Pausha Limited, but Pausha has got other number of other products. Uh, CMIC is only the common product with between the two. otherwise we do not have listed uh, apple to apple peers thank you sir thank you 
Thank you. The next question is on the line of Keshav from Raksant Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, sir. If I look uh, year on year, uh, we did higher quantities of HMDS and CMIC this quarter, and we have had a huge jump in bromides as well. But we have made a materially lower EBITDA margin as well as absolute EBITDA, and all the reduction has come via gross margins, as our other costs are largely flat. So even if we forget the margin and just focus on absolute EBITDA. it has come down from 17 cr to 13 cr so where is this margin pressure really coming from is it cmic hmd as a bromide it is because of the lower volumes in fact so sir uh, year on year we have done actually actually year on year we have yeah. done higher rip, uh, volumes in uh, all all the products the productions are going up every day and the volumes have not grown in proportion to that that has resulted into reduction of the ebitda there is a marginal uh, difference of the raw material cost also and uh, sir i disagree because uh, our uh, uh, gross margins is the source of all this reduction our other costs are flat year on year so and we have done higher volumes in cmic we have grown by almost 20% hmds we are somewhere in the range of uh, uh, 8 to i think 5 to 8% bromo benzene we have doubled so all the reduction is has come from gross margins so there is some uh, pressure uh, in the in the i mean in the pricing or the raw material so there is a pressure of the pricing of the raw material as well as on the finished product the differential margins which used to work up has come down a bit so that's what i'm trying to understand where is it coming from because hmds is a cost a cost plus uh, model for us and Actually, uh, as far as that Uh, yeah actually but that is an area where it has affected us so all the three products uh, margin pressure year on year has come margin in all the three principally on hmds so we are not uh, forming uh, uh, we are not uh, any more in the tmcs plus uh, conversion based uh, model we are in the years to be but but that plus model keeps on changing it is not in fixed model most of the time it remains consistent however there can be changes and this quarter there has been a pressure on that okay and sir if the cmic demand comes back can we be sure of going back to 30% kind of margins because like again the same logic even at lower tonnage we had historically done 30% margins so is is it something we can again aspire with the same products not the uh, new products Yes, we might see we can go with the thirty percent margins even in present era under the pressure. Okay, and HMDS we cannot commit. Is that uh, yes, HMDS, fair? Yes, uh, the projections are uh, for one or two quarter. We cannot bank up on that similar margin. There will be a lower okay. margin in respect to HMDS for the current quarter, or maybe one more quarter. Sure, and sir, for Guanine, so are we confident of not running into issues that we had with 4 DST and uh, CBC of not being able to make inroads into the supply chain? Here we have got multiple users, so we will not be facing that problem. Okay, and we plan to uh, optimize the capacities uh, in FY24, both for both Bromo and uh, for Guanine as well. Yes, sure. That okay. That's all for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Shah from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, hi sir. Um, just a uh, brief review on the next year's revenue and EBITDA margins outlook for the business as a whole, considering the the demand you are expecting and the volume growth. If you have any target insight or any numbers, even if not just an outlook in general. Sir, I will. I won't be able to project give you the projection. How do you see it? Uh, we see a good business volumes. We see a good margins. Uh, that is the only thing I can update you. Uh, I cannot give you the figures or the projection. Okay, okay, no problem. Do you expect a good growth? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shah, you done with the questions? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is on the line of Rajesh Jain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, just wanted to know, based on the, the, the current market demand as well as the company's capability to sell, how much time would it take to you know, run the Gunain facility at full capacity? Maybe maximum uh, a quarter. A quarter. So that means by end of FI24, uh, both uh, Bromo as well as Gunain, uh, you should be running at uh, the good, um, the full capacity? Bromo, Benzin, you can consider about 75% and about 85 to 90% of Gunain. Okay, fair enough. Sir, uh, will there be any further delay in the commissioning of P10 uh, plants, sir? Uh, P10, first quarter 24, no, there should not be any delay in that. Okay. See, uh, I, since you, you say it is an import substituted and it is both for agro as well as pharma, will there be any time for getting the approval or something like that? It is also uh, it is for agro as well as pharma, so approval timings won't be impacted because uh, the customers can be changed from one to another, and some of the pharma require certain approvals. Uh, yeah. Agro may not require that. So then, how much is the capacity we are coming up, and is it fungible between these uh, two products? No, it is not fungible with the products, and capacities depend upon the product. My, we will, if you ask me the capacity. The next question would be what would be the sales price and what would be the top line and all that. Please restrain me from all that. Okay, fair enough. So I'll, I'll rephrase my question. So for these products, can we expect a good you know, uh, ramping up of this uh, you know, capacity in FI25? Capex to top line, you can expect 3.5 to 4 times. No, sir. Uh, running them to their you know, whatever the maximum capacity, can it happen in FI25? That is what I'm asking. FY25, it will happen. Ah, that is what, because 24, it will happen for Gunain and Bromo, and 25 would be for DP10 products. Sure. Ah, sir, my last question is, uh, see, HMDS and CMIC products had been driving our you know, company sales in the past. So which products will do that in the next three to five years? It will be... Added, it will become a mixture of products. It will not become uh, the dedicated cornered product. So we hope uh, all together will be driving the company. With that are the targets. We don't want to concentrate on particular products. We want to dilute our concentrations on these two products in particular. Okay, so so you know not a single or a two products will drive the future growth of the company. No, no, we want dilution of uh, the concentration, so we will have all products to be working in line. Acha, okay, sir. Lastly, this new land that you have bought at around six kilometers from the existing place. So when would the you know the what are the plans for that? When will you start the commission uh, capex work and other thing related things? That is a long-term prowling. We have taken the agriculture land. We have given it for a conversion to non-agriculture. Once we get the permissions, after that we'll start planning. And it is a long-term planning. Maybe a couple of years it is going to take. So that is only to dilute the uh, concentration on one location. This uh, particular land we have taken with that as an intention. So we will we intend to go for multi-location working and hence uh, the other location which is as good as another location and which is just 5-6 kilometers. No, sir, my intention was like once we commission the P10 project, so will there not be any more capex in next financial year, FI24? Definitely there will be there. It will be there. But yeah. you don't have place at uh, the existing plot, right? Uh, I have entered into a understanding for the next door uh, land also. So the future capex will happen there. Happen over there. So we will be expanding in the existing facility as we will be expanding in the uh, place other than the location. Okay. So for this existing land, will the products will remain the same or you are again going for some newer products? No, no. It will be added products only. New products? 
Yeah, sure. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dheeral from Philip Capital PCG. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, on the oil field uh, side particularly, as you said, we have done a certain contract for bromide import. Sir, if you can share some color, you know, for how much quantity and what is the timeline of this contract? It is a one-year timeline of the contract for purchase of raw materials. And uh, quantities, it will take care of the demand of about 40% of my total requirement. So raw material, 35 to 40% of the raw materials we have already contracted. For supply in the next or in the current calendar financial year. Calendar year, sorry. And so, what about the remaining portion, sir? Not on financial year, they are on calendar year basis. Yeah, I got your point, sir. And what about the remaining 60%, sir? Where are we sourcing from? If that is domestic sourcing only, that will be non contracted on an ad hoc basis. But, sir, are we getting that availability? Because, you know, previously, you know, we find it very difficult to get, you know, the RM as they were exporting. Yes, definitely. We are getting some material. There will be a pressure for the domestic raw materials. We are working on contracting for that also. Okay. And sir, if you can split the revenue of HMDS and CMIC for the quarter, for the nine month and for the last year. Mm -hmm. That separated figures, um, I think SGA will share, share with you. Okay, no issue. Sir, and lastly, sir, what are the prices of HMDS and CMIC currently as on this? CMIC is about 400 rupees and HMDS is about 650 rupees. And so how is the movement on a quarter on quarter basis? Sorry? So uh, how is the movement on a quarter on quarter basis? Let's say, you know, December quarter as, as to the current date. It is nearly stable. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ayush Mittal from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good noon to you, Ayush. Uh, so, uh, so, in line with the earlier questions around the profitability of a company that, uh, as we can see, that it is under a lot of impact, uh, the gross margins have come down. So, what I would like to also understand is that uh, what kind of profitability are we aiming for in the new, uh, new products that we are doing? New products, again, we work upon 30 to 40 percent of the month or we work upon the payback period of about less than a year. Okay. So, apart from the uh, issue that we are facing in the HMDS, we believe that in uh, as we scale up on the other products, we'll come back to a normal profitability levels of 30 percent operating margins? Yes, it should be. Okay. And uh, how long do you uh, expect these margins to remain low in HMDS? HMDS, I cannot comment that the margins will remain consistent because uh, we have been enjoying this margin since more than five years. I mm -hmm. feel now it should start reducing to some extent from 20, maybe marginally. Hmm. Okay, so as of now, you don't have a visibility on uh, getting back to good profitability on this as of now? Uh, no. Okay, and as we scale upon uh, like Bromo Benzene, this product you are seeing uh, margins of more than 30% operating margins. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ayusha Garwal from MAPL Value Investing Fund. Please go ahead. Um, sir, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, my question is on a P10 plant, uh, given that we are in the 5-6 months of commissioning time, can you name some products that we are about to manufacture there? Mm, it's not the right time to disclose on that. Alright. Uh, what amount to be spending in P10, given that you have mentioned 0.54x is our return set plant? Your voice is getting broken, dear. I could not understand. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, I'm asking what amount are we planning to spend in P10, uh, uh, the KPEX amount? 22 crores. 22 crores. Yeah. Okay, okay, understood. Um, uh, my last question is on our HMDS exports. So uh, if you can help us understand, you know, what would be the margin difference between pharma and non-pharma application of HMDS? 
it is uh, it is nearly similar non pharma if it is a high purity one then there are better margins which is nearly okay. double or maybe more than double otherwise mm-hmm. it remains uh, at par um, in, in that case sir then our hmds margins have come down drastically yes it has come down but not drastically marginally um okay okay thank, thank you, you sir yeah thank you the next question is on the line of kesha from rakshans investors please go ahead uh sir would it be possible to give a year on year or cri- or a quarter to quarter price change in uh, tmcs as well as uh, mcs and ipa uh that that query you can give as far as the uh, specific prices are concerned to sg uh, will provide you independently so sure, sir Th- thank you that's all from me thank you the next question is from the line of keshav garg from counter cyclical pms please go ahead sir very good morning sir firstly i wanted to understand that between all our plants and all our products is the capacity fungible no the capacities are not fungible they are fungible on unidirection for one product not otherwise otherwise they are not fungible right so also if you see page number 29 of the investor presentation so the volumes in fy19 were 11118 which in fy22 almost half to 6065 whereas the uh, revenue fell only 15% from 300 to 257 during this period so so obviously the realization went up during this period and now maybe they are coming down so firstly the question is so that the pharma demand has has started falling in this financial year fy23 so then why did our total production volume decrease from fy19 to fy22 adhya uh, i'll have need to go through that again once but in principle the volume in the pharma requirements has come down the total volume what has been provided to you it includes the oil field chemicals also there was a pressure on uh, certain area of oil field chemicals and hence the volumes got impacted so we better not consider all the volumes all the margins everything to be in line with each other mm-hmm. so a mixed volumes for different products will not give you the real idea for you will have to work up on individual product volumes only right sir so also sir we see page number 77 oh, sorry, of last year sir uh, so your audio is not clear can you use the handset mode while speaking and it's clearer now sir so i wanted to understand that our r&d expense is only 6 lakh rupees last year so so i mean how are we managing then since we are a specialty chemical company so only 6 lakh in r&d 0.02% of revenue See, we don't do R and D. We do re uh, engineering of the product. R and D is for the chemistry. We don't play with the chemistry. Chemistry remains the same. It is already pre-performed. Our engineering expenses are more, or re-engineering uh, process uh, engineering pro expenses are more. We concentrate on that and not on the basic research in chemistry. Right, sir. Also, sir, lastly, wanted to understand so that till FY17, our operating margin used to be around 10%. Then, subsequently, for the next five years, they jump to around 30%, and now they are again decreasing. In the latest quarter, we have done 18%. Sir, so, uh, so I'm trying to understand the direction. Sir, was it that the past five years were an uh, uh, were an aberration and now things are uh, coming back to normal or are these margins an aberration and margins will again uh, go back to 30 percent this uh, period uh, in the present one or two quarter if you see the margins there have been a pressure that should not be considered as a base for the business deviation we need to wait for a couple of uh, quarters more to understand the line or the, the direction for the margin in fact what we expect is uh, the margins should maintain be maintained or there can be a marginal pressure say there can be a reduction from 30% to 28 or 25% but uh, then the volume should take care of that or the other products that we will be adding can take care of that 
but don't expect uh, one quarter result on the basis of that or two quarter result um, you can decide a direction of uh, the profitability at least with chemcon products or the chemcon working it is uh, not fair enough so basically for the next financial year can shareholders expect the operating margin between 25 and 30 percent uh, i should not comment on that let the time okay. come and time prove on that okay thank you very much investor welcome welcome to you thank you ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was our last question i now hand the conference over to mr kamal agarwal for his closing comments friends with this i conclude the call if you have any queries please get in touch with sgs our investor relationship advisor thank you everyone for joining us today on this earnings call thank you thank you Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Chemcon Specialities Chemical Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.